good morning i'm sorry i'm not able to be there with you um, but i'm going to talk on uh, principles of external fixation as they relate essentially to reconstructive surgery you're going to hear a lot of uh, good things about the fixator but this is about how to ensure that you get this right so with such bad skin uh, large gaps if you use the proper principles you can get this bone transported you can get it healed uh, despite all of that poor conditions and the biomechanics of the elizarov as well as the lrs are extremely uh, important ultimately the goal is to get optimal stability and we'll go through these four kind of uh, variables that are in our control where the rings wires the tension in the wires and the concept of internal stability now stability is not equal to rigidity rigidity in elizar of terms at least is an undesirable type of stability because it is uh, not a dynamic thing the desirable instability that we want is a controlled and axial micro motion angular bending shear and rotation are not good uh, for healing so all unilateral fixators are cantilever but fixators like the lrs uh, can be made axially unstable and therefore uh, they can be used in the uh, for for uh, reconstructive purposes as a definitive uh, treatment the elizarov as you've heard is an i beam where the wire is connected on both sides of the uh, ring and the central portion acts as a trampoline so as i said axial stress is good bending stress twisting stress or shear stress is something that has to be protected against we want controlled uh, instability in the axial direction and if you look at instability it's a complete spectrum from extremely unstable to rigid and when you have a higher degree of stability you get this primary union which is what ao used to talk about nowadays most of us are looking at secondary union which is uh, slightly towards the unstable side of the spectrum but stable enough that it doesn't go into a hypertrophic non union so in the plane of the fixator you have axial movements but these axial movements are accompanied by bending for a unilateral fixator 90 degrees to the fixator plane again the axial movement is almost negligible and the bending movement is much less so when you use uh, this kind of a delta frame you compensate for the deficiency in one plane where um, in the plane of the fixator there is bending and perpendicular to the plane of the fixator the bending is much less so you cancel out these uh, instabilities so to speak but this makes it very stiff now if you look at the uh, uniplanar fixator other variables the distance from the bone the thickness of the pins Uh, the thickness of the connecting rod all of these are uh, important and in case of the lrs the connecting rod is is much much um, thicker that is the rail and that gives it stability and we are using 6 mm pins also we are always looking for internal um, stability so this is axially unstable by design and this can be controlled if you tighten the nuts Uh, it becomes very very uh, stable even in the axial direction and it is stable to bending rotation and shear by the size of the shan spins as well as the size and cross section of the rail so for any elizarov procedure whether we are using an elizarov fixator or an lrs uh, it has to be a stable and dynamic fixator but you also have to look at soft tissue preservation and Uh, the functionality of the fixator where the patient should be able to do weight bearing as well as mobilization of the joint so a ring fixator because of this trampoline effect gives you the axial instability but we also 
have to look at uh, what is the effect of the rings, the wires, the tension, and the connection rods, and as I said, the intrinsic stability. Larger rings are less stable, so we use a ring as small as possible, but at the same time, you have to take care of soft tissue impingement, so as small as possible, as large as necessary, as few as possible, so that the rings, uh, the, the fixator itself is sort of uh, comfortable for the patient, but if required, as many as needed. When you have bone offset within the ring, as happens in the tibia, you have better stability. The rings are usually perpendicular to the mechanical axis uh, of the limb. Now, a ring block is, as in this fragment, two rings which are attached to the proximal uh, fragment. So having a ring block always uh, a good idea, but sometimes you have small fragments and if you are close to the ends of bone, the ideal would be like this to have a ring block, but using one ring and dropping wires off it so that you are able to span as much of the bone as possible is a good idea. So depending on what is your configuration, over here I can have two ring blocks. Here I have a small fragment, so I have a ring as well as a drop wire. Uh, also, if the, the, the fragment is large enough, you can still have two rings which are closer to each other. The difference here is the rings are as close to the ends of that fragment as possible. You've got to have at least four rods between adjacent rings. And like in this situation where there's a long transported fragment, if you just put the regular rods, uh, they are not stable enough. So then you have to put these kind of telescoping rods, which essentially increase the diameter of the rod and make it more stable. Or between the two, you can have something known as a dummy ring, which just breaks up the connection, has no pins connected um, to it. Wires that we use really are 1.8. You can increase the number. Really, we can't increase the thickness. If you get a good crossing angle, that is good. Elizarov wires should be tension. And why do you tension the wire? Because as you increase the tension in a non-linear fashion, the stiffness increases. So a non-tensioned wire can be uh, deflected very easily. A tensioned wire cannot be deflected that easily. And usually we are looking at around 150 kilos of uh, tension for a 1.8 mm wire. It's a good idea to use a dynamometric tensioner and tighten the bolts well because loss of tension is not a good thing. We use olive wires so that they stop movement in one direction. For example, the olive here will prevent the bone from moving in this direction. So when you are correcting a deformity, we use this rule of thumbs where you have opposing olives at opposing surfaces of the bone to help to correct the deformity. It can also help to compress uh, fragments. When you have opposing olives from each side and those olives are tensioned, this, the shear forces between these fragments due to the oblique fracture line can be converted into compression force. Now, remember, we are talking of motion. We are talking of micro motion and not macro motion. What is micro and macro probably is not really defined, but the broad consensus, I would say, is about less than one millimeter deflection at maximum load. The shan spins that we use are tapered tip because uh, they give you less axial uh, micro motion. We found that they have less loosening. And in case of uh, osteoporotic bone, you can also use HA coated pins. What are these angulated pins? I'll come to in a bit. Now, the worry is that if you use half pins, are you not going against the principle of Elizarov? Possibly, I mean, that is not exactly uh, as good as a wire. But practically speaking, there is no evidence against uh, the use of hybrid frames. And we've not noticed uh, any trouble, neither is there anything in the literature. There's no fixed rule for a ring and wire uh, formula, so to speak. And uh, what I would say is you should use as many as necessary, especially when you are starting out. Using an extra wire is never a problem. Nobody is going to blame you for using uh, an extra wire. 
and if at all there is some loosening one wire can be taken out without uh, too much of trouble but at the same time if you use unnecessarily too many wires then the patient has to take care of that many uh, wires that many areas of potential uh, pin site infection so again this is a balance that comes with a little bit of uh, experience but uh, generally as i said there's no fixed rule for that now if you have a short fr uh, fragment how do you ensure ring stability so that's the ring looked at in two views you can put in wires uh, in the plane of the ring if you have 90 90 crossing of those wires that's excellent but hardly uh, anatomically that's not really possible except in a couple of areas so but you should go for at least about 30 to 45 degrees of crossing between the wires if you add olives that improves the stability if you add shan screws again that uh, improves the stability and this shan screw as you notice is away from the ring so that you are able to hold uh, more of the span of the bone as possible and you can also use angulated screws like this which are off the ring but at an angle um, to this so again essentially though the post is only this long the hold of the pin has gone further distal so if you put uh, shan screws like this you are further improving the stability so a ring block in a large fragment is equivalent for a shorter fragment to a ring with fixation above and below that ring and if there is sort of one slide to remember out of all of this is look at this one four is more stable than three which is more stable than two which is more stable than one what's the difference here the shan spin is holding it at a different angle it is in a different plane as the wire same thing here but the angle is less similar thing here but the shan spin is on the ring and number 1 is the least because the shan spin is the same direction so if you increase the distance maximum distance to hold the fragment that is better if you have angulation between whatever implants you are using that is better if you have um, the implant at a distance away from the ring that is better and if you have it angulated we call it beta 1 and beta 2 beta 2 around uh, 45 degrees to 70 degrees is is good and this alpha the angle between them when looked at axially at least 30 to 45 is a good idea now the last thing i want to talk about is intrinsic stability which is brought about by bone contact and when you do lengthening soft tissue tension also creates a type of intrinsic uh, stability the less the intrinsic stability more you have to create fixator instability so look at this case for example there there is a proximal and a distal fragment they are kind of disconnected what we did with the fixator was get this proximal into that distal and connect it uh, compress it with that we are able to get a good stability and this went on to heal uh, without too much trouble you can see the kind of fixation that we have for a small fragment we've not held the heel all wires in multiple angles drop wires plus intrinsic stability so optimal stability for a fixator what is in our hands really is you can use olive wires increase number of wires and pins in a better levels of fixation and span the given fragment many of these other things may not be necessarily um, possible for us due to the anatomic reasons so less the intrinsic stability more has to be the fixator stability lrs really you should use only when there are large enough fragments pins can be spread out and the bone quality is good so in summary the ring fixator is a combination of components there is no cookbook use principles and concepts 
and use each component to get most bang for the buck or get, get most advantage from, from that component. Thank you.